Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to this very special video inside of the C++ series. This is where we are concluding everything we've talked about to this point. Now we did not cover everything, obviously, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct you on the next steps to study. And if you guys are good, I'll even consider doing a second section of this series if you guys would like to see videos 101 to 200 or like 101 to like 1000 or something. <laughs> All right, let's, let's think small. Anywho, the first 100 videos have been good and we went through a lot of information. I know it can be very overwhelming and C++ is probably one of the more challenging programming languages. That being said, there are a lot of perks to studying C++ because I feel like you learn computer science and just the, the theory behind everything at, much, at a much more intimate level because of the challenge behind C++. So the fact that you went through all these videos and have understood the material, now if you ever go to other programming languages, I would say you probably have a pretty good understanding of how things work and basically the roots of it all, which is how things originated inside of C++. Now, I wanna give super special thank you to our sponsor for sponsoring this entire series. I know if you've watched the series, you heard their message a lot. I thank you for enduring that, but they, they were a tremendous help in bringing this series into production and I can't thank them enough. So check out Embarcadero Rad Studio as well as Embarcadero C++ Builder if you're looking for a more thinner application that can do a lot of the same capabilities. So C++ Builder has a free edition you can go check out. Rad Studio does cost money, but they do have a free trial if you wanna check that out. Either one will help you build cross-platform apps and do a lot of really cool stuff with C++. I imagine if we do go into a second section of this series, using a tool like that would be pretty awesome because now we have a pretty good fundamental understanding of how C++ works, a little bit on object-oriented programming, and then we could start building real-world applications using a tool such as Embarcadero C++ Builder or Rad Studio. So I can't thank them enough. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description if you want to get started with that. That is what I would point to you guys next. Now that you have this stuff figured out, go build some real world applications and leave a comment in the comment section below saying what you're going to build. And don't give me no wishy-washy, I think I might build this, or if I get time, blah, blah, blah. Commit to building something and make it happen and let me know what you're building in the comments. Now, what other topics would I consider studying if this was the end video or if we go into section two? Well, the first thing is I would learn object-oriented programming at a much more intimate level. We scratched the surface, but we didn't really talk about multiple inheritance, and we didn't talk about a bunch of the gotchas with object-oriented programming or the, the design principles of object-oriented programming. There's a lot when it comes to object-oriented programming, and you could probably spend half a series just talking about that alone but I'll try not to do that to you guys, but I would encourage you guys to study that a lot more. So make sure you have a really good understanding of the keywords such as virtual and how to, how to work with friend functions and make sure you understand the access modifiers, public, private, and protected, as well as the access modifiers. When you inherit from a class, you can say, oh, teacher inherits from public user. Well, you can change that access modifier as well, which changes how things work. So those are just some basics with object-oriented programming that I would look into. Another big thing I would study is different types of collections. So we talked about arrays, templatized arrays, and vectors, which are kind of like the basic three, but there are a lot of different other collections you should know about, and I'm sure people have built their own custom libraries of special collections optimized for a particular purpose. So go study into those. The next thing I would really study is debugging. We didn't really talk about that at all in the series. And honestly, my strategy for debugging in this series is just to do outputs when I can't figure things out. And that's fine, but that's really not a scalable solution. So you need to understand the concepts of debugging, breakpoints, and all of that good stuff. So research debugging inside of C++. And debugging is usually a built-in capability of common IDEs such as C++ Builder. The next thing, I would look into software testing and how to test a C++ application. This will basically ensure that your code does not break as you refactor it or expand upon it and learn about the different types of testing like regression testing, integration testing, and just unit testing. All those different things, we could get into all of that, but we really just don't have time in this video. So maybe, maybe in another day, but please leave a comment section knowing what you guys will be interested in knowing about and I'll try to uh, see if I can fit it in. Now another topic that is not as important in C++ as in C, but it still can come up is the concept of pointers and dynamic memory. 
We really didn't talk about these a whole lot because in C++, a lot of this stuff is managed for us. We can just use the classes and everything just works. But as you get into some more complicated stuff, you might need to use pointers or some dynamic memory. So that might come up and you might wanna study on that. Another topic is templatized classes. We talked about templatized functions and how to do that, but we didn't really talk about templatized classes, which could be useful for you guys if you need to work with some more generic style programming. Uh, and I'm sure there's about 50,000 other things that I'm missing because C++ is huge. There are a lot of resources. I'll try to leave some in the description for like, I have a good book that I'd recommend for C++. Check that out and let me know what you thought of this series and please consider subscribing for future series as that would tremendously help out my channel and it would also put a big giant smile on my face which I'm sure you guys want. Me and my spouse pretty much did slave labor nonstop getting these 100 videos out for you guys so the least you can do is subscribe. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's been real, it's been fun. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.